Hello everyone, welcome back. In the previous video, we talked about SSH shell and uh, you know generally accessing the server. And in this video, we're going to talk about moving around the system, uh, basically navigation and some other basic commands. So in our mini roadmaps, we are somewhere around here. Let me just start the virtual machine, uh, the Debian virtual machine that we created last day. And again, I'm logging in with my username and password that I created. Since we have not configured any static IP, it's most probably changed the IP address at this time. Let's go ahead and verify the IP address. Yep, it did. 192.168.0.120. We will talk about configuring a static IP address in another video. But for now, let's just continue with what we have. Again, I'm going to log into my server using SSH 0.120. Okay, I mean, the first commands that we need to learn is about navigating the system itself. So, there are like a bunch of commands. The first one is pwd. So, pwd means print working directory or print current working directory. If I enter pwd, you can see it's slash home slash mansour. Basically, it just tells you where you are in the file system at this point. Actually, before we talk about ls, I think let's start with cd. cd just lets you change directory. That's why it's called cd, change directory. So cd is used to change directory. So what happens if we do cd slash? Then we have changed our present working directory to slash. And if we do cd tilde, this is called tilde. It will take you back to the home directory. It doesn't matter where you are. If you use build with CD, it will take you back to your home directory. So if I am somewhere in, and if I do CD tilde back to the home directory. And another useful feature of CD is, let's say if you are in uh, slash home, and then you went back to slash. So CD space hyphen takes you back to the previous directory. So that's what CD does. And the next one is LS or list. I'm pretty sure all of you know these commands, but I'm just gonna cover them anyway for those of you who don't know them. So LS simply lists the contents of the current directory. And LS dash L does a long listing. So if we go to, uh, let's say war log, and if you do ls-l, you know, it will list the directories and files in that current directory. But there's a lot more information there. Just ls this, ls-l like this. So back in our home directory, ls-l lists the current directory's contents, but it does not show all the files and directories in there. That's why we use the a switch. These are called switches. So the A switch lists all the files and directories, including hidden files and directories. So here you can see there are a bunch of hidden files and uh, a hidden directory. So remember in Linux, any file that starts with dot is considered a hidden file. And any directory that starts with a dot is considered a hidden directory. There's like a few more useful switches for LS and uh, one of them is lh h means human readable basically it displays the file size in a human readable format if we go back to our log here you can see the sizes of the file is displayed in a human readable format 127 kilobytes 286 kilobyte etc and another useful switch is t basically what it does is it sorts file by timestamp. So here you can see that it displays the latest file or you know recently modified file at first and you know the oldest file at last. We can reverse this using the R switch. So if you do ls lhtr, it will display the oldest file first and the newest file last. So this is one of those commands that you use a lot of time, especially with log files. You know if you go into the uh, var log directory which i will talk about in a couple of minutes 
So if you want to see which is the latest log file or which is the re most recent file, so you use ls-ltrh. And another useful command that I don't see a lot of people use is called pushd. So it's very useful if you move around the system a lot. Let me show you how it works. So what I did is pushd space the directory name. Here you can see that it just added it to a list. So if I do push t now again it added it uh, added that to to the list. Uh, what if I do push t again it added back to that directory and again it, it not only adds the directory to a list it will also move you to that directory. So this is like you know cd but with a list of all the directories that are you that you are changing. Uh, let me show you how this is useful so if you do this it will show you all the directories that you have pushed also if you do pop d it will bring you back to the previous directory you can do that again and it will bring you back to the directory before that basically push d and pop d can be used if you are moving around the system a lot and you want to keep track of all the directories that you have visited it lets you go back to any of those directories very easily all right so we talked about moving around the system and listing directories and stuff now we let's now let's talk about reading contents of a file so let me check okay i have a directory called foo and i cd into that and i have a file called hello.txt now there are a lot of ways that you can open a file one of the basic way is to use cat so you do cat space hello.txt and it will display the contents of the file Cat has a lot more useful features, uh, which I will explain in a minute. But for now, cat can be used to open small files. Let's go back to a bigger file because you, you don't want to use cat for all the files. For now, let's just switch to the root user. So to switch to another user, you use su hyphen and root or you know whatever the username is. And I'll explain what this hyphen does, but for now, let's just go ahead with this. Remember the syntax su space hyphen space root. I enter the root password. So I am root right now. So if we go to cd war, cd war log, and if I try to open this log, so that's a big file. Now, obviously, you don't want to open it and you know scroll to the beginning of the file or uh, anything like that. So another useful tool to see the contents of a file is called ls. But before that, let me just clear the screen using clear. Or you can use control and L to clear the screen. So if I do less, this log, it opens up the file in less. You can use your arrow keys to move up and down. You can use the page up or page down to move up and down. You can go to the beginning and end of the line very easily. To go to the end of the line, just press Shift and G. Shift plus G. End of the file. And you can press GG to go back to the beginning of the file. And if you want to search root, here it highlights that search result here. And you can press N to go to the next result. So small n search down. If you use capital N, it will search up. And another useful way to search is using the question and uh, let's say clean up. So what it does is it searches backward. That's all about less. And uh, another useful command is head. So if we do head, it's log. It will by default print 10 lines i think it's 10 lines from the beginning of the file and uh, you know tail is obvious then it will print from the end of the file 10 lines from end of the file but you can specify how many lines that you want to print for example if you want to print just one line you can do head hyphen n1 syslog it will print the first line similarly if you if you do tail minus n1 syslog it will print the last line now let's create files and you know manage files let's go back to the normal user and uh, go back to the home directory you can use the command touch 
to create an empty file here as you can see it created an empty file called file.txt so if we check the contents of it there is nothing now this is this is not only use of this touch command it's mostly used to change the timestamp of a file for example if you look here it says that the timestamp of the file is 1346 so now if i list it again it will still show the timestamp as 1346 this is the this is the time of the creation of the file now we can change that easily using the touch command so if i do touch space file.txt it changes the timestamp to 13 you know whatever the timestamp is at that point in time that created an empty file right that is of no use we create directories using mkdir you can see folder one has been created you can create multiple directories down the line using the dash p switch for example f1 slash f2 slash f3 slash f4 will create all the directories from f1 till f4 using the dash p switch actually before we continue with more commands let me take a moment to talk about the command man so this is very useful command to actually create a manual on any specific command now obviously you're not going to be able to remember all of these switches i talked about like you know what switch to use when that's where the man command comes into picture you can use man space any command for example ls to see a manual on that command so here you can see that it shows all the all the available options in there you can use the arrow key to scroll up and down also you can actually search here for example if you want to know how to do a human readable format you just do you know forward slash and search for human there you know, i talked about the dash h switch before so you use that to see a human readable format so feel free to use the man command whenever you feel stuck or you know you want to know how to do a specific thing with a command you create a copy of a file using the command cp and you create a copy of a folder using a command cp r so if we look at the man page for cp and search for dash r you can see that it copies directories recursively and to remove files or directories you use the command rm let's take a look at the man page for rm remove files or directories this is you know dash f or dash dash folds which basically means it will never prompt what it means is that if you do rm dash f it will not ask you for confirmation it will just delete the file or the directory let's delete the file rm file.txt so i deleted that and now let's try to delete the directory using that now if you do that it's gonna tell you you know cannot remove foo it's a directory now i don't know how to delete a directory so how do i figure it out again we open the man page and search for man rm now i open the man page using man rm and search for directory here by default rm does not remove directories use the dash dash recursive dash r or dash capital r option to remove each listed directory see it's so simple you don't even have to remember all the commands depending on the shell that you are using you can use wildcards to delete files or and I do any kind of shell command if i want to delete all the files and folders starting with the starting with f i can easily do that using rm dash rf f which is the beginning of the file or folder i want to delete and then a star then press enter now it deleted all the files and folders because everything was starting with f you have to be very careful with using this star because that's going to delete everything if you do rm dash rf on a slash this is going to destroy your virtual machine or if you do it on a production system or your you know actual machine that's going to destroy everything now if i do this 
nothing is going to happen because I'm not a root user. Also, because people do stupid things, Linux have put some barrier preventing people from doing that. If you take a look at the ARM's man page, you can see that there is a special switch called no preserve root. Do not treat slash specially. So what it means is actually let me just show you what will happen if you try to do that. Let, let me just switch to the root user. And I'm going to try and do rm dash rf slash. So if you are stupid enough to do that, it will actually warn you it is dangerous to operate recursively on slash. Use dash dash no preserve root to override this failsafe. That is, if you really want to mess your system up, you know, Linux says that you go ahead and do that, but just use this switch. I'm not going to do that because I obviously don't want to destroy this virtual machine. Let's create another file again, F1. Now, how do you rename a file in Linux? Well, you simply move the file, which will rename it. Basically, there is no command to rename a file. There is just move command or MV to move the file from one location to another. Okay. So another useful and very important feature of Linux is redirection or command redirection to be specific, which allows us to take the output of a command and redirect it to a file or another program. For example, the command echo displays whatever string that we type in. So if I do this, it just prints it out. We can use the same to actually write the content to a file. As you can see, it has written that to this file. So now if you notice here, this is a single arrow, which means it will overwrite whatever the content of this file. So if I do echo, Here, as you can see, it has overwritten the previous content which was hello world and now it's just who. We can change this behavior using two arrows. So if I do and use two arrows and file.txt and if I do cat file.txt, you can see it didn't overwrite the file, instead it just appended that to the same file. So single arrow overwrites the file, double arrow appends the file.